understand that normal's not working. Normal is, is over 50% of marriages are failing today. Do, do you know that? Over 50%. Over. Over half of the marriages, the people that, when you go to a wedding, over half of the weddings that you will go to, that means that those people, over half of them will not make it. Problem is you're, you're fully involved, but you're not fully committed. All right, who's ready for a new series? Okay, I can just see your excitement. All right, who's ready? I like new things, all right? So you got to help me out. Um, just somebody's got to say this. Uh, you you got to, you know, it's important that we understand, all right? So um, here's what I want you to say all together. Love is a fight, all right? Come on, somebody say it. I right, say it again. Love is a fight. And some of you are saying, yes, we know, like more than you could ever imagine, right? Love is such a fight. Matter of fact, you've, May have, you know, gotten in a fight on the way to church this morning. All right, it's okay. There is forgiveness. Um, we're going to help you work through it. Uh, love is a big deal, such a big deal for all of us here. And, and I don't want you for a minute, because I know some people will say, "Well, that's not a big deal for me," because I don't love anybody but me. And uh, I just want to tell you, uh, wake up. All right, get real. Because love is a big deal for all of us. Every single one of us, love is a big deal. And the reason why it's a big deal is because you were wired to love. And because you were created out of love. Every single one of you, you were wired to love people. And you were created out of love. There is a God that loves you. Read the Bible. The whole Bible is about God working to show his love for us through Jesus. And yet love is one of those things where man, we, just, we, don't, we don't want God to be a part of it, right? I heard God, you've got your things and it's okay, you know, you stay over there. But man, over here, God, I don't want you telling me how to do relationships. I, I don't want you telling me how to date I don't want you telling me who to date. If I want to date some psychopath, I'll date them, right? I mean, that's the truth, right? We don't want God involved in that. I, I, God, I don't want you telling me who to marry. I'll marry them. I'll marry who I want to marry. And um, <laughs> it's interesting. We don't want him to be part of it and, until he needs to be part of it to fix something, right? It's like, oh, God. Dear God, help us. We're falling apart. You know, we, we, we don't go to him until, until that moment. Love is such an, uh, it's such an interesting thing. When I think about the different calls that I get for counseling, which and I've told you many, many, many times before, I'm, I'm not a good counselor. I can listen to you. Um, but as far as counseling, you don't want to come to me. You want to go to somebody that's trained and a professional. But whenever I get calls about counseling, the majority of the time, it's around this subject of love. When, when we look at prayer requests that come in, the majority of prayer requests are around this idea of love, relationships, and, um, and marriage. Marriage it's, uh, and relationships, they're, they're wonderful, Right? One man in here, <laughs> one man said it. Now, listen, guys, I teed you up. Like, I had you ready. You were going I mean, to put a smile on your wife's face. I mean, it was going to be good, and you just sat there. Okay, so we're going to try it again. All right, here we go. Ready? I'm, I'm just I'm getting you ready for this one. Marriage and relationships, they're wonderful, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, we got it. They're wonderful, right? And until, until they're not. And that's why we're starting this series. And it's a series for every one of us. It's, it's not, listen, I'm, I'm not going to leave anybody out. So it, it's not a series just for those that are married. 
It's a series for whether you are in a relationship, you're not in a relationship, you're married, you're not married, it doesn't matter. This is a series for you. My goal is simply this, throughout the series, is to give you tools and, um, and spiritual guidance to help you honor God. That's it. That's my goal. Because love, you, you think about love, it's, it's, it's a fight. And when I look around, man, it sure does look like that we're really losing the fight. We're losing the fight when it comes to relationships and when it comes to marriages and when it comes to dating, we're losing it. And so we, we've got to see, you know, we've got to see how to fight God's way. Because relationships are struggling. Like everywhere you look, they're struggling. Everywhere. And if we're going to have the best year of our life, if we're going to have the best year spiritually, it's going to be hard to do when our relationships are terrible. And so we've got to figure out how, you know, how to fix that. So I, I want to start today by just asking you a question. Okay, now think about this question because this, um, this, is, this is the title of the, today's sermon. It's so important. I title the sermon this way. This is the question. What does marriage mean to you? You say, well, <laughs> pastor, I'm not married. That's okay. It's still important. What does marriage mean to you? Think about it. Doesn't matter how old you are. What does marriage mean to you? Because what marriage means to you really helps dictate the, the rest of your life when it comes to relationships. In fact, I want to give you a key thought for today. And the key thought is this. The way you think about marriage influences the way you think about relationships. I'll say it one more time. The way you think about marriage, it influences the way you think about relationships. When you think about dating, it influences how you date it influences who you date. The, the way you think about marriage, it, it, it will influence what you do on a date. It's so important. The way that you think about marriage influences the success of your marriage. It's so important. I realized that when... Um, speaking to a, a crowd of this size, that there are a lot of you that um, you, you come from a home where there was, there's separation, where there's divorce, like uh, a failed marriage. And I, I hope that you will hear my heart today. I, I, I'm not here trying to condemn you. I'm not trying to judge you, make you feel guilty in any way. I, I realize that relationships are hard. Um, I, I've got a couple of people on my prayer list right now, men, who they didn't ask for separation. They didn't ask for their spouse to do what they're doing. They didn't ask for them to walk away. But yet, they're walking away. And I'm, I'm praying, I'm asking God for strength, for healing. And I realize there's some of you, that's you. you. You didn't ask for it. Others of you, you're here and you would say, well, I didn't ask for it, but yet I'm, you know, I'm, I'm as guilty. I'll, I'm, I'm not innocent. There are things that I did that where I was wrong and, and it caused things to fail. I, I get all of that. And what I want all of us to know is we can't go back and change the past, but God can change the future. He can have an effect on that. And so that's why we're doing this, this series. Um, the, the way I want to structure things today is I, I want us to, first of all, I want us to look at what God says about marriage. Okay, um, it's just important that we understand. As we answer this question, what does marriage mean? We, we've got to understand what the Bible says about marriage and what God says about marriage. And so let's track all the way back to Genesis chapter 2, 
Verse 24, this is like the, the first statement that we see where, where God shows this idea uh, of marriage. And this is what scripture says in Genesis 2, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. Now, if you're married in the room or you've attended a wedding, chances are you've heard this verse. And the reason why you've heard this verse is because this is God. This, is, this is, came from his mouth. These are the words that he said. You'll notice in here where it says, hold fast. Hold fast is um, um, uh, davak is the Hebrew word. And it's this idea of um, joining together, to be joined together, to stay with. It's an idea of, of being overtaken, which is really strange because you, know, you would think that uh, two would overtake one, but, but the, the, the picture here is that, that two individuals, two comes together, two are joined together, and they're actually overtaken and become one. It's very, very significant. And God paints this picture. Two individuals, two separate lives, come together as one. Now, Jesus would come along, and in Matthew chapter 19, Jesus is going to take this thing up a notch. We're, we're going to see in Matthew chapter 19 where Jesus is going to quote the words of the, spoken by God, but then he's going to even carry a little bit further. We're going to look at that real quick so that we can build this foundation. Look at what Matthew uh, 19, verse 4, 5, and 6 says. Jesus said, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Now, he's, he's talking about God and he's talking about, have you not read all the way back to the Genesis account, the Torah? Have you not read this? Verse 5 says, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. Jesus is quoting God. He is quoting himself right there. He's quoting scripture. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And then he says in verse 6, So they are no longer two but one flesh, what therefore God has joined together. A key phrase. What God has joined together, let no man separate. Like marriage. It originated in the heart of God before it ever made it to the, to the mind of man. It's all God. And it's important that we understand that. It's important that we know that marriage is not some worldly institution, but it's actually something that God himself originated. God himself ordained marriage because if, if we don't know that, then we'll tend to believe what the world says. And the world is sending uh, confusing messages about marriage. Would you agree? Very confusing messages. In fact, this is what the world says marriage is. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. The world says that marriage is a contract that can be broken. That's what the world says. But when we read this passage of Scripture, we see the words of Jesus say something completely different. This is what Jesus says. He says that marriage is a covenant that's meant to be honored. And there's a difference. There's an obvious difference between a contract, some you know, contractual agreement where we just sign on the dotted line and this idea of this, this covenant that's meant to be honored. So right off, I hope that you can see why it's so important that the way that we think about marriage influences the way that we think about our relationships. It makes sense when you see the world and you hear them talk about marriage. Like it makes sense why it's influencing so many people's lives. Like why bother to get married, right? I mean, we watch the TVs. We, we see it on the movies. It looks so good, man. Let's just do relationships like them. Let's just live together. Who needs marriage anyway, right? I mean, that, that's kind of the message that, 
that we're getting. And we're seeing this in all the studies. We're, we're seeing what's happening. We're seeing a worldview that's shifting. For example, um, I read this week, we're on, on uh, the Christian Post Com, where they cited a study, a recent study that was done that says almost, and the almost is 90, uh, like 90, uh, I'm sorry, 79.9%, almost 80% of teenagers, 15 to 19, expect to live together before they're married. Think about that. 80%. Of students 15 to 19 are planning right now, thinking in their minds, you know what? I'm gonna live, I'm gonna live with someone else before I get married. Moms, dads, that's our kids. Do you, do you, you see the, the worldviews starting to shift? And, and, and you start drilling down into this thing, and it, and it gets a little bit. Um, you know, more concerning. Out of the 80%, 95% of them say that one day they plan to be married. So it's not like they're just going to live with somebody and, and, and not be married. No, this is, these are people who are saying, I, I'm going to live, I'm going to live with someone, but you know, one day I'm going to, I'm going to get married. I expect to one day get married. And out of that 95%, 87% of them say, I'm going to have kids. I I plan to have a family one day. Now think about this. Think about how it's shifting. The values are shifting. Think about what's going to happen. Generations are being changed here towards what it means to be married. We're raising up a generation that looks at marriage as it's just contractual. The way we think about marriage, it really, it really matters. And it sounds good. Like, man, let's, let's just try things out. Let's enjoy the benefits. We can save some money. The, 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 the problem with this whole thing is that it's like normal. Like, that's what the world's doing. And you do understand that normal's not working. Normal is is. Over 50% of marriages are failing today. Do you know that? Over 50%. Over. Over half of the marriages, the people that, when you go to a wedding, over half of the weddings that you will go to, that means that those people, over half of them will not make it. We're changing generations here. This is a big issue. Studies are showing that living together, it, it lowers the odds of marriage being successful. Can, can I get a witness? We don't need it to get any lower, right? So this is why this is so important. How, how we think about marriage influences all of our relationships. We, we think about, well, living together, hey, we'll just move in, man. And, you know, we'll... It'll make living cheaper. We can co-sign the the lease, you know. We'll get a dog. You know, we'll we'll just, man, it'll be all good. We'll just, everybody's doing it. The problem is you're, you're fully involved, but you're not fully committed. You, you don't even have to live together. Like you, you can just stay over once in a while. You know, you can just play married. Oh, we're going to act like we're married. You know, we're going to do the married thing, you know. We're going to take trips together while we're young. The problem is you're pretending to be married. And when you pretend to be married, when things get hard, when, when things don't quite work out, when you start to fight... Guess what happens? The first thing you want to do is you want to run and you want to break up. And you go from pretending to be married to practicing divorce. You you see how important this idea of marriage 
is. The way we think about marriage, it influences the way we think about relationships. Jesus, he comes in and he shows us that marriage is more than a contract. It's a covenant. It's holy. It's why almost 29 years ago, when I walked out on my wedding day and I declared to Andrea, for better or for worse, in richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, I will be faithful to you. Like when I declared that to her, it's a covenant. It's me making a, a, a promise, an agreement to commit myself to the promise that has been made. But yet, when you look at marriage as simply a contract, something that can just be washed away, you see the significance. I want you to think about this word covenant for a moment. Covenant in the, in the Old Testament is the uh, Hebrew word berith, okay, berith. It, it's spelled a couple of different ways, B-E-R-I-T-H is one. Um, you might see it another way, B-E-R-I-T-Y-H, berith. And berith simply means a cutting. It's a blood covenant. That, that's what the word covenant is. If you want to know what, what just the bottom line meaning of the word covenant, a cutting. It, it, it's a blood covenant. It's a, a binding agreement. That's what the covenant is. And so when you track back and you go back to ancient times in, in the Old Testament, whenever a covenant was made, there was always a shedding of blood. So what would happen is they would, they would sacrifice a bull, a lamb, or you know, a sheep. Okay, They would sacrifice that and, and they would cut that animal in half and they would lay the two halves down on the ground. They would lay them down allowing for the blood to, to pool in, be, in between the two halves. And, and what would happen is if you were making a covenant you would walk in like a figure eight way you would walk in between the two Halves. And when you met in the middle, the, the, the symbolism there is that you're, you're in this covenant together. You're, you're, you're in a relationship that, that, that's never going to end. It represents an endless relationship. And if the covenant is broken, the idea is, may what happened to this animal happen to us. That was, a, that was a covenant. You might would see a covenant in a, in a, in a marriage ceremony where the, um, the palm of a hand would, would be, an incision would be made or maybe in, in the wrist an, uh, an incision would be made to draw blood and the two people, the, the husband, the groom and the bride would join hands together allowing the, the blood to mix symbolizing that two bloodlines are coming together as one. That's the idea of a covenant in Scripture, a bereath. The, the same idea is shared when it comes to, to sex. Sex has the same Significance. It symbolizes that they are physically, they were physically two people, but now they're, they're coming together as one. And it's not just a physical thing, but it's a spiritual thing. In the eyes of God, they're now one flesh. That's the, that's the idea in Scripture when you consummate the marriage. It's what makes sex in the context of marriage so beautiful is because God ordained it like it's a gift it's holy it's it's a blessing from him and it's for marriage so much for marriage 
I'll give you just some, um, some, some scripture just to um, strengthen this point. Hebrews 13, 4. Scripture says, let marriage be held in high uh, honor among all. In other words, what, what the writer of Hebrews is saying, it doesn't matter if you're married or if you're single. You, you hold this in, 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 in honor. You, you honor marriage. And let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and the adulterous. He, he's going to judge them. Like the Bible teaches that this, that sex is meant for the, the covenant of marriage only. Which is why the way we think about marriage matters. It's so important. Scripture goes on. I'll, I'll give you another one. Okay, if you didn't like that verse, maybe you'll like this one. Ephesians 5, verse 3. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality. Even a hint. Or of any kind of impurity or greed because... Now, I love this next phrase. You, you, if you've got a Bible, underline it. These are improper for God's holy people. Like the standard is so high. The, the holiness is, is so high that we're, we're not to even have a hint of sexual immorality. Not even a hint. And, and you think about it for us, what do we try to do when it comes to sin? We, we want to, if this is sin, if this podium is sin, what we want to do is we want to try to get as close to it as we can. Like, man, we want, to, we want to be all up on that thing without touching it, because if I touch it's a sin, but we want to get as close as we can. But yet, what the Bible is saying is that, no, you don't need to try to get as close. You need to get as far from it. Don't even let there be a hint of sexual immorality. Do you know what a hint is? Anybody want to guess? Like, what, what, is, the, what is a hint for you? Is fooling around when you're dating a hint? I think so. Premarital sex? I think we could all agree that's a hint. It's more than a hint. Adultery? Looking at pornography? That's a hint. I mean, you, you think of the standard. It, it's, it's so high. Like who in the world could, could live like this? You, you think of the words of Jesus. When, when Jesus, he took things up a notch. When, when he talked about adultery, what did he say? If, if we have lust in our heart for someone else, what did he say? It's, it's a sin. It's adultery. And so now... Let's go a little step further. Then, then what we wear could make a difference. Ladies, all of a sudden, what you, the way that you dress, do you dress modestly? Is, is, is there a hint of sexual immorality? Guys, when you go to the gym and you're taking all those selfies in front of the mirror trying to flex your biceps... What are you trying to do? Is that a hint? The, the, the standards are so high. The, the holiness is so high. When you think about this, it's, it's almost like I'm, I'm not even sure that there's anyone here that hasn't broken marriage it's a blood covenant it's a covenant that's meant to be honored and the, and the way that we think about marriage it influences the way that we think about relationships this makes our decision making before marriage incredibly important like I know if you're in middle school right now or you know or, or when you look at someone you're not thinking I'm going to marry them. 
You're in high school. When, when you're dating, you're not, you're not thinking about, I may one day marry them. No, you're just, you're just attracted to them. They look good. You, know, you want to you wanna be around them and be with them. This changes how you date. Now, all of a sudden, you look at someone and you think, well, um, I probably won't marry them, but that's somebody's spouse. That might not be mine, but there's somebody else's. So now it changes the, the way I look at them. It changes the things that I do. It, it, has an, it influences me. It's incredibly important. Like, Pastor, you're saying no sex? Like, come on, it's natural. Like, it, why is God like that? He's like some cosmic killjoy. Why, why, is, he, why is he holding me back? Let me, let me tell you something. God is not trying to keep you from sex. He's trying to keep you for it. He, he's not trying to hold you and keep you from something. He's trying to keep you for something, for, for the, 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 the marriage, for the covenant marriage, for a relationship that's got commitment to it. So this makes a difference. God, he's our good, good father, and he's looking at his children, and he's like, I, I want to protect you. I want to protect you. I want to guard you from the heartache and the emotional uh, damage that, that, that comes from this when you have it outside of the covenant of marriage. You feel the weightiness of this? So let me ask you, what does marriage mean to you? Is it just a contract that can be broken, that you can walk away from anytime? If it is, then that's going to influence the way that you live out all your relationships. Or is it a covenant that's meant to be honored? Some of you today, you're going to realize that, that you're not honoring God. Maybe you're dating and you're not honoring God in your relationship. You've done things that you can see quite clearly that God's word says you shouldn't do. I want you to know that there is no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. So don't feel condemned. Uh, my, my intentions here are not to make you feel guilty. Now, you may, you may feel convicted. Conviction is actually good. Like it's God's way to, to move us toward better things. And so maybe you're here today and you're feeling convicted. Then listen to God. Maybe you, you need to do something. There, there's something for you. Maybe your first step is you got to confess your sin to him. You got to tell him you're sorry. God, I didn't mean to do that. And you, you got to take some steps towards purity, towards doing it God's way. And that may mean I don't know, moving out for you. Some of you may live together right now. You need to get right with God and move out. And I know it's costly. Man, I, I, I know there's a, you got a dog involved. Who gets the dog? I don't know. But marriage is that important. This covenant relationship is that important. You, you want to honor God with your relationships. Some of you may choose to, you know, like, I, I want to honor God ahead of my desires. And so that may mean you do some weird things. Like when you're dating, you plan your dates. You, you don't have alone time. Because you know if you get alone, the temptation's going to be there. Like, you know, you, you, you just, man, you draw the line and you draw it way, way back. I don't know what it is for you, but what's God saying? Some of you right now, you're not even in a relationship. You're not dating right now, but it, this is going to change the way you think. 
Like you, you, you see it, it's not a contract, it's a covenant. So you're gonna begin to wanna, man, I wanna save myself. I wanna prepare now for a godly marriage in the future. I don't, I don't, I don't know what it's gonna be for you. Maybe you're here and you're married and you're thinking about all this stuff and you're like, well, hello. I didn't, I didn't date like that. I, I, I lived more like it's a contract than a covenant. And maybe right now your marriage feels more like a contract. I just believe somebody's going to fight Anybody can fall in love. But it takes Jesus to fight for your love. Some of you have been thinking about calling it quits. But it's a covenant. And God's going to change your heart. He's going to call you to do some crazy, crazy things. Things like maybe even reading the Bible together. I know it sounds weird, but married people do it. This week we were in with my, uh, my in-laws for a little while and every morning, every morning we would s- s- sit around the table and um, have a devotional together. I got to admit, it felt a little bit weird. But it was so good. Some of you are going to do something like that. You're going to get really crazy, and you're going to pray together. Man, imagine what that would be like. Some of you that are newly married, and you're struggling, you're having a hard time. For you, your step might be, you know, you're going to join an L group. And I, I just, I want to take a moment and press in on this one. Do it. Like, do the thing that makes you feel uncomfortable. Do the thing that you've never done before so that you can have what you've never had. This, just this week, we started just a couple of groups just for you. One of them, I kind of like. I mean, if, if I'm being honest, one of them is my son-in-law and my daughter. All right? They're going to lead a group. And some of you, you're young couples, you're out here and and you need to say yes to a group. Join their group. All right, it's a great group to join. There are other groups. Do something, do something. Man, this marriage is so important that we fight for it. Maybe you're here and like you're you're divorced. Like, what do I do? You know, you're single and you're searching. Let this change the way that you look and marriage. The next time, you'll do it differently. There's there's good news for all of us here. Because as I said before, you know, a hint, the chances of us all living without a hint of sexual immorality is doesn't exist. But there's good news, and the good news is the Bible says that there's a Jesus. There's a God who loves us. And he gave himself for us. And the new, we're new creations. Like the old is gone. That means the past is behind you. Whatever you've done in the past, it's gone. Your sins are forgiven. And Jesus makes all things new. And let me tell you something. We don't live under the old covenant to where when you want your sins to be forgiven, you go and you sacrifice an animal and and you offer it up to God. No, we live in the new covenant covenant where Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross for you and for I. And it's not us that makes ourselves righteous before God, but it is Jesus. And so whatever you've done in the past, it's in the past. When God looks at you, he sees the blood of Christ. So one more time. What does marriage mean to you? Because the way that you think about marriage, students, the way that you think about marriage, it influences the way you think about your relationships. 
married people? What do you think about marriage? It influences the way you think about your marriage. It's a gift from God. It's holy. It's a covenant. You keep fighting for it. Me you bang your heads. speaking to you. Maybe God is redefining a little bit for you what marriage is. Are there some areas in your life right now where you need to fight and you just need God's strength and his power to be active and working in you so that that you can fight? Is that you? Maybe God's speaking to you right now. Pastor, I just need prayer. I need prayer. Things are, things are not right where I need them to be. And Pastor, I just want to ask you to please pray for me. I don't know what that might be, but would you just pray for me? If that's you, wherever you are, would you just lift your hand? I want to pray. Go ahead, lift it up, lift it up. No shame. before I pray we've talked a lot about a covenant uh, let, me, let, me, let me tell you about God's covenant with you he made a covenant and this covenant is the fact that he loves you so much that he gave his son Jesus for you you see your sins and my sins they needed to be forgiven if they were not forgiven then the cost of that would be eternal separation from God and so God offered up his son, Jesus. And Jesus shed his blood on the cross on Calvary. He shed his blood for you and for me, for our forgiveness. So that whoever would receive him as their Lord and their Savior, their sins would be forgiven. They would be forever changed, the old gone and the new come. And let me just ask you, has that ever happened to you? Has there ever been a time in your life when you've said yes, to Jesus Christ, when you've placed your faith in Him and you surrendered your life to Him and He controls you, you live for Him. He's at the center of your life. If there's never been a time in your life when that's happened, then why not right now? Right now, right now, why don't you just say yes to Jesus? Just pray this prayer with me. Just say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I need forgiveness. So please forgive me of my sins. I'm inviting Jesus to come into my life right now. Go ahead. Jesus, please come into my life. I'm turning from my life of sin to a life surrendered to you. Go ahead. Ask him that. I'm turning from my sin. I'm turning to you, Jesus. My life is all yours. I'm all yours. Listen, did did you pray that prayer? Was was that your conversation that you had with God? Because if it was, he just saved you. Your your sins are, are, are forgiven. You are forever new. The blood of Christ covers you and has cleansed you. That is what happened just then. And if that is your prayer, wherever you are, I'm gonna ask you to do something. It's gonna take a little courage, a little boldness, but you've got it in you. If you said yes to Jesus this morning, would you just lift your hand right now? Just lift it up and hold it up. Go ahead, lift it up, hold it up, hold it up high, hold it up high, come on. Come on, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Come on, thank you so much. Thank you for your honesty. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Those of you that are watching on the other side of a screen, you can lift your hand as well. If you're an online church, you can click the little hand raised emoji. You can follow the links that are being placed by our hosts that are there. Listen, we're one big happy family here. We're we're here to love each other in Christ. We walk through this life together. Jesus, he didn't die for one, he died for all. And we're here to celebrate that. Lord, thank you for Jesus. I thank you that God, you created marriage. It didn't start up here in our minds, you created it. 
And so if you created it, you will give us the strength to fight for it. And for some, that fighting begins long before they're ever married. Some of them right now, they're fighting in their dating relationships. I pray that you would keep them pure. I pray that you would help them to put the steps in their life to save themselves for what you want for them one day. Others need to fight. They're wanting to call it quits. They're looking for every, every different kind of thing to, to say bye to this relationship. Oh, today I pray that they would stop and they would begin to fight. They would recognize that marriage is a covenant that they made, not just with their spouse, but with you as well. And that you would give them the power and the strength to fight. Heal marriages today, Lord. We're asking you, heal them. Bring forgiveness. Thank you that in this place people have said yes to you. Their lives have been forever changed. We love you, Lord. We praise you. And it is in the name of Jesus we pray. All of God's people said. Amen. What a great message from Pastor Lance as he kicked off our message series, Love is a Fight. And we learned all about what marriage is, what biblical marriage is. And make sure to come back next week as Pastor Lance continues this message series. And hey, if you're watching live or during the week and this service bless you, send this link to a friend, a family member so it can bless them too. We look forward to seeing you guys again next week. Have a great one. 